I'm Ray Belton, the president of the Southern University System, the only historically black system of higher education in America. I am joined this evening by the honorable members of the Southern University Board of Supervisors, and together we bring greetings from the campus of Southern University and A&M College here in Baton Rouge, an institution who today is celebrating 141 years of advancing academic excellence. We would further like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to the many people who have given unselfishly uh, to, uh, to serve this great state of Louisiana. Uh, through their advocacy, they have enabled higher education institutions across the state to fulfill their respective duties to the stakeholders of our great republic. As we reflect on the challenges before us, and those we have overcome, we hold on to hope and look forward to great expectations. We believe an investment in education is an investment in our future. And, and tonight, we are proud to host our honorable governor, Governor John Bell Edwards, as he delivers the 2021 State of the State Address. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President. Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser and members of the legislature, distinguished guests, and all of my fellow Louisianans. I am honored to be speaking to you today from the campus of Southern University. And I want to thank you, President Ray Belton, for your hospitality and to your entire team for helping to put this event together following current COVID-19 mitigation measures. I also want to thank you for sharing your campus with the public as a hub for a drive-through testing and vaccinations. Your efforts have been nothing short of tremendous. And in fact, just this weekend, the Southern University System administered over 1,000 vaccination sites. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, today the bleachers are bare, but one day soon, if more people continue to get vaccinated and we hold down the transmission of the virus, we are certainly going to fill this stadium once again. And I can't wait to be here with you watching the human jukebox and the Jaguars take the field. I am looking forward to that day. This is not how I would typically deliver my opening speech for session. But then again, this has not been a typical year. Usually, as you know, I would be in front of a joint session of the legislature in the House chamber, but I spoke to Speaker Schneider and President Cortez and decided to change the venue in order to keep everyone safe and adhere to current CDC guidelines. To the legislators who are here today following the opening of the 2021 regular session, thank you for your service. Thank you for your presence. I look forward to working with you and all of the legislators this session. I know this hasn't been an easy year for you, for your families, for your businesses. COVID has taken far too many of our friends and colleagues. Earlier in the pandemic, you even lost one of your own, Representative Reggie Bagala. As you know, I lost a member of my own staff, April Dunn, around the same time. And then in December, Senator Regina Barrow lost her husband of 36 years, James to COVID. Senator Barrow, I want you to know how much I appreciate the work that you were doing despite your own heartache to encourage people to get vaccinated. To everyone watching, thank you for continuing to tune in and work with us as we navigate these uncertain times. I want to especially acknowledge those who were impacted by Hurricanes Laura and Delta. Please know that we are working hard every day with your local leaders, our congressional delegation, the Biden administration, to address the many needs that remain in Southwest Louisiana. I'm also joined today by a number of healthcare and frontline workers. Cynthia Keller is the lead production supervisor for food and nutrition services for Lane Regional Medical Center in Zachary. Dr. Aldo Russo is the regional medical director at Oxford Medical Center in Baton Rouge. 
Cynthia Pitts is the Environmental Services Supervisor for Baton Rouge General Medical Center. Eric Swear is a respiratory therapist for Women's Hospital and Belinda Beavers is the RN supervisor for the COVID ICU unit at Our Lady of the Lake. Chef Lonnie Trabeau with City Group Hospitality knows firsthand how the pandemic has impacted the restaurant industry. And she also spent time cooking meals for people experiencing homelessness. And Rakia Gallion has helped prepare over 30,000 meals a day for the East Baton Rouge school system. So please join me in welcoming these heroes this evening. These individuals, as well as thousands of others from across our state, are the reason that we're here today in a better place. And I am beyond grateful. At my last State of the State address on March 9th, 2020, I announced the first confirmed case of COVID-19 in Louisiana. In that singular moment, everything changed. Since that day, there have been nearly half a million confirmed cases in our state. On January the 7th, 2021, only a few months ago, more people were in the hospital with COVID-19 than at any other time during the pandemic, with 2,069 hospitalizations. Today, we have 308 people in the hospital with COVID. And then, yeah, we're doing better. Thank you. We're doing better. And then there's the number that we, weighs the heaviest on all of us, the loved ones we've lost. 10,241 of our brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, friends, and fellow Louisianans are no longer with us. In 2020, COVID was the third leading cause of death in Louisiana behind heart disease and cancer. The flu has never come close to holding that spot. One of our worst seasons for flu deaths was 2018 and 19, when 1,550 people died. We've lost over six times that number to COVID. Almost every day, for over a year now, you've heard these numbers and you've seen them increase. Number of new cases, number of hospitalizations, number of new deaths. But the numbers alone don't begin to tell the whole story. Nothing can measure the pain of a family celebrating their first holiday with an empty seat at the dinner table. Two numbers in the daily death count added just a few hours apart don't do justice to the 60 years of marriage these two people shared together. The numbers don't adequately convey how long the ICU shifts have been or equally long hours of figuring out how to pay the bills after being laid off. Unfortunately, COVID is not the only burden that 2020 brought us. Three devastating hurricanes made landfall in Louisiana. Two of them, Delta and Laura, came ashore just a few miles apart in southwest Louisiana. And Laura was the strongest hurricane to hit the state since at least the 1850s. Thousands of homes were destroyed and lives were turned upside down again. As I said a moment ago, we are working every day to pick up the pieces and make communities whole again. We will not stop rebuilding. We will not stop making Southwest Louisiana stronger than ever. And for every story of loss, there has also been one of survival because Louisiana is a state full of unwavering faith and an enduring spirit. I wish I could stand here today and say that COVID is completely behind us. We're not quite there yet. That's why we're still wearing masks and socially distancing and taking all the necessary precautions that we know work. Even more so now that there are variants of the virus spreading in our communities. But I will tell you there is hope. A couple of weeks ago, we opened up COVID-19 vaccine eligibility to everyone 16 or older. We have three extremely safe and effective vaccines that are the ticket to ending this pandemic. And on Friday of this week, we'll open our first federally sponsored community vaccination center in Baton Rouge. What a difference a year makes. 
I know some of you have questions. I know some of you have questions about the vaccines, and that's okay. Most of us, myself included, didn't go to medical school. That's why I have Joe Cantor with me everywhere I go, and he's at all of my press conferences. That's why you see doctors and nurses on the news reaching out to the public. So when you hear me say that the shots are safe and effective, that's not coming from me. That's coming from doctors and scientists and epidemiologists like Dr. Jane Martin, a physician specializing in maternal fetal medicine at Ochsner. And she is with us here tonight. Thank you so much, Dr. Martin. Not only has she been educating patients and the public on the importance of getting vaccinated, Dr. Martin received both doses of the Pfizer vaccine while pregnant with her third daughter. And she wants all patients to feel comfortable asking doctors about getting the vaccine so that they too are able to make informed decisions about their own health that are based on facts. Over 28% of Louisianans, more than 1.3 million, have already begun their vaccine series. We need as many people as possible to be in that number as soon as possible to put this pandemic behind us. We have a new vaccine hotline you can call to schedule your appointment or connect with a medical professional who can answer your questions. That number is 1-855-453-0774. Again, it's 1-855-453-0774. So we're not out of the woods yet, but we are moving forward. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about now. What's next? Over the past year, we've been pushed to think outside the box, to work in new ways, learn in new ways, socialize in new ways. One thing is clear. We can absolutely do things differently. So this legislative session, let us challenge ourselves to envision new ways of making Louisiana better for all of our citizens. Tragedies like the ones we faced often remind us of our shared humanity. But then things start to get back to normal and we forget that for some, the road to recovery is much longer and more difficult. Like you, I want Mardi Gras parades to roll again. I want festivals to resume. And I certainly don't want to have to wear a mask all the time. But I don't want post-pandemic Louisiana to look completely like pre-pandemic Louisiana, nor should it, because we can do better. The pandemic has highlighted inequities that have persisted in our communities, especially when it comes to health outcomes. These inequities were not created overnight, nor will they be eliminated overnight. They're the culmination of years of policies and neglect that our communities of color and low-income populations have borne for generations. If we do not address these issues now, we are doing a great disservice to people who have already suffered so much. That is precisely why early in the pandemic, I established the Health Equity Task Force. It's why we rolled out the Bring Back Louisiana campaign or working to ensure that all communities have access to the vaccine. It's also why I created the Resilient Louisiana Commission to ensure that small businesses that have been devastated by this pandemic have a seat at the table and a path forward. Through this work, we have safely reopened our economy and are quickly making up the ground we lost to the pandemic. It's why five years ago, I expanded Medicaid to the working poor in Louisiana. Because of that decision, many more people, hundreds of thousands, have had access to primary care physician and the ability to afford prescription medication in order to treat or control underlying conditions that make them more vulnerable to COVID. I know that we still have a lot of work to do in order to improve health outcomes, but I can't imagine how many more people would have died this past year if not for the Medicaid expansion. Another way we've established groundwork for a more resilient Louisiana is through the creation of a climate initiatives task force last year. No state in our country is more adversely impacted by climate change than Louisiana, but at the same time, no state is better positioned 
to be a leader in reducing carbon emissions and bolstering coastal resiliency. By 2050, our goal is to reduce carbon emissions to net zero and to have invested $50 billion in rebuilding Louisiana's coast. The reason I know we can get there is because we are working with, not against, the energy sector that sustains so much of Louisiana's economy. Oil and gas production in the Gulf of Mexico continues to be important to Louisiana's success, and by working with these companies on a forward-thinking basis and to find solutions like carbon capture, we are going to make Louisiana more sustainable while also unlocking a whole new sector of economic and job opportunities. It's fitting that we're on the campus of Southern University today because economic diversification and access to opportunity starts with education. I have presented a budget that includes another pay increase for K through 12 teachers and support staff. And it's not enough, I know that, but it is yet another step closer to bringing teacher pay back to the Southern Regional Average. And I hope that in a few weeks, our revenue estimate will look even better and we will be able to increase that investment. Another priority for additional funding is early childhood education. And I know that just about every legislator shares that goal with me. My budget also includes a faculty pay increase for higher education as well as $15.6 million towards higher education budget stabilization. It also fully funds the top program, which is estimated to need and will receive another $13 million this year. And it includes a historic $11 million increase in funding for GO grants. Tonight, we are all joined by Brandon Jones. He's a senior at LSU, majoring in electrical engineering. I took a few le electrical engineering classes and didn't do so well, Brandon. I'm very, very envious of you. Brandon graduated high school from Scotlandville. He works to give back to his community through volunteer efforts. And Brandon has received a GO grant every year and he credits that scholarship with the ability to stay in school and complete his degree. So Brandon, I have an idea of how hard you've had to study in order to earn this degree. And by increasing funding for GO grants, we can help many more students like Brandon to achieve their goals. Let's give Brandon a round of applause tonight. I want every student who walks on any campus in this state to have the opportunity to thrive. I also want them to go on to succeed in the workplace. And simply put, we can't accomplish this if we aren't investing in higher education. We also can't accomplish this if students aren't safe on their own campuses. My administration has worked closely with members of the Louisiana Women's Legislative Caucus to propose House Bill 409, which would ensure faculty and staff are properly reporting Title IX violations per their university and system policies. I know there are other bills that could be beneficial, and I'm committed to working with legislators on this issue. The key is that we have to get this right, and we have to do it now. This isn't the only way we are striving to make Louisiana a more just and inclusive place to live. We're also introducing legislation to ensure that pregnant or postpartum workers have reasonable accommodations to promote the health of both mom and baby. I've seen businesses, we all have, they've pivoted. Thank you. We've seen businesses pivot to address health and safety measures quickly because of the pandemic, and I applaud them for doing that. But if they can do that, there's no reason a company can't accommodate a worker during or after pregnancy. Louisiana, unfortunately, continues to be one of the worst states in the nation for maternal and newborn health outcomes. But we've already made significant progress. Last year, we met our goal of reducing maternal mortality related to hemorrhaging and hypertension by 20%. And therefore, I am more than confident that working with both healthcare partners and employers, we can reduce even more preventable complications for mom and for baby.
Louisiana also continues to have one of the largest gender wage gaps in the country. My le legislative package includes pay transparency bills that are simple ways to address pay equity. You've heard me talk about this before, and you're going to keep hearing me talk about it until we actually do something. It is beyond time. Frankly, it's embarrassing because we all know that when women succeed, Louisiana succeeds, period. <laughs> Speaking of paying people what they're worth, at the beginning of this speech, I introduced you to some people who've been working on the front lines of this pandemic. And there are so many more frontline workers all across our state in various occupations like grocery stores, schools, and restaurants. And some of them, many of them, make the minimum wage, which in case you need a reminder, is just $7 and a quarter per hour in our state. And it has been since 2009. We call essential workers heroes for continuing to work throughout this pandemic. Yet even when they work full time, we don't pay them enough to cover their essential needs. I am one of the overwhelming majority of Louisianans who want a meaningful increase to the minimum wage that will help workers support their families and enjoy a better quality of life. This year, instead of including a specific minimum wage bill in my package, because I've tried that before about five times, I am supporting any and all efforts to raise the minimum wage. So my measure, I'm sorry, my message to the legislature is simple. Pass a bill, get it on my desk, I'll sign it. Three additional bills in my package are aimed at improving advocacy for those most vulnerable. The first is establishing a statewide Americans with Disabilities Act coordinator within the Division of Administration. The ADA coordinator will provide educational and technical support for state and local agencies. My administration has made disability rights a cornerstone of our time in office, and I hope the legislature will join us in making sure every Louisianan knows they belong. Second, we will create an Office of Human Trafficking Prevention within the Office of the Governor. Ending human trafficking is an issue that both my wife Donna and I are very passionate about. And I want to pause just for a moment to thank you, Donna, for all that you've done on this critical issue for our state. Thank you, sweetie. We have certainly made progress when it comes to identifying trafficking cases and supporting survivors, but creating a designated office will allow us to place an even more concentrated effort on ending these horrific crimes that are tantamount to modern day slavery. Third, we will be introducing legislation to create a Foster Youth Bill of Rights. It was written by and for young people who have gone through our foster care system. I am thrilled to be able to introduce you to some of them today. Antonika Frazier, Aliyah Zayan, Jarvis Spearman, and Tet Tet Rogers. Thank you all for being here. Your advocacy, advocacy is going to continue to help so many young people. And they should know that their voices and their experiences are important. Finally, I want to take a moment to discuss some other items that will be widely debated this session. As you all know, this is a fiscal session, and with that comes a tendency to throw a lot of bills at the wall just to see what sticks. But true tax reform doesn't just mean tax change. Since 2016, we've made great strides in stabilizing Louisiana's budget, and our efforts are paying off. In fact, earlier this year, Moody's Investors Service revised Louisiana's fiscal outlook from stable to positive. And I believe, I know, we have the opportunity to gain back the momentum we lost to the pandemic and natural disasters. But remember, in just four years, two more special sessions, I'm, I'm sorry, two more fiscal sessions, I don't want any more special sessions, <laughs> two more fiscal sessions from now, counting the one that started today, the 0.45% sales tax 
rolls off the books. We already have one of the lowest combined state and local tax burdens in the country. So while we can and should make reforms, they must be revenue neutral. No one wants to go back to the fiscal mess that I inherited and that we all had to deal with several years ago. And quite frankly, I won't let that happen. And like you, I'm extremely grateful for the $3 billion in assistance we are receiving through the American Rescue Plan. I believe our first priority needs to be replenishing the Unemployment Trust Fund to ensure that we can continue paying benefits and protecting businesses from tax increases. And and then because these are one-time dollars, we should use these funds on one-time expenses like infrastructure projects and paying down debt. I also want to make sure that we're maximizing federal dollars to serve as many people as possible. And that includes capitalizing on funding for high-speed, affordable broadband for every single person in the great state of Louisiana. As I have always said, my door is open. Let's talk. Let's make reforms, but let's make sure they are real reforms, like the ones recommended by a task force made up of economists and tax professionals that the legislature itself created in HCR 11. So in closing, as we enter the 2021 regular session and inch closer to the ending of co the COVID pandemic, I am hopeful because the people of Louisiana are as resilient as ever. In 2020, we had many dark and cloudy days. To borrow a line from Louisiana State song, it felt like our sunshine had gone away. But better days are here, and even better days are ahead. I was thinking about this recently as we celebrated Easter, and I know that Easter is a time that renews our hope and faith in brighter days to come. In his first letter to the Thessalonians, St. Paul told them, and he tells us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in all things give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. I know how hard it's been to find ways to rejoice or give thanks during the pandemic and natural disasters, but it is getting better now. A new day is dawning with every single shot in every arm. And while we are 10,241 rays of sunshine dimmer here in Louisiana, we're going to keep their memories shining by working hard to create a better state for all of our people. At the end of the day, it's the Louisiana people who truly make our state bright. So let's work together Let's fight for the future that we know is possible. Let's get our sunshine back. God bless the United States of America, and God bless the great state of Louisiana. Thank you all. Thank you. And thank you.